just to come on to today's topic and, the, and a quick presentation from me today. And uh, those of you that know me will know that I'm not technical, so I'm not going to uh, promise to have all of your answers in this piece here. But really, I just wanted to share a little bit of the learning that we've had um, from working with customers over recent months as people start to look at cloud and move to cloud migration. Most of you know me, I think, um, and I did attempt to introduce myself earlier when we had a fail, but uh, my name's Ailsa and I've been working here at Protocol now for 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I worked for BT for 20, so I've been working with major customers all my life um, and spent the last 10 years working in managed file transfer in particular and with a real focus on EFT over that time. So EFT was one of the most popular products when I first started working here and it's remained the same. It remains our most popular uh, product from our customers. Now, just to reiterate, I'm really not technical, but I will do my best for you today. So why do we want to put this piece in for you? Are we really seeing that increased demand? And James referenced it earlier in terms of Gartner's expectations of the marketplace and the fact that that number of cloud-based deliveries would increase. And I would say that we're absolutely seeing that here on the ground and that practical delivery of that is very much what we're seeing. So I just gave you a quick quote there from, from Gartner, but I also looked at another study from them. And um, Gartner's 2020 Cloud End User Behaviour Study found that organisations are 17 times more likely to increase spend on cloud between now and 2025. So there's definitely demand for cloud that's coming. And I think one of the points that they raise is whilst there's real potential for cloud to improve business capabilities and outcomes, there's also an opportunity for it to increase wasteful spending. It's really important that you don't try and take what you're doing today and put it into the cloud. It does require some thought process to suss out bad practices or just things that you've been doing for a long time and actually there's now a better way of doing them. And I think we do have a few customers that come to us and say, let's just do what we're doing today in the cloud. And I would say that requires a little bit more thought. So what's driving this demand right now? Certainly what we're seeing is uh, the pandemic definitely had an influence, and I think that's been reported fairly widely, that the pandemic's driven this need for digital transformation. It drove people working from home during the pandemic. I know I've been working from home uh, pretty much full time. It drove a change in terms of who was available within organisations to assist with managing infrastructure and managing managed file transfer. And it also drove away in terms of what resources you wanted to apply. Did you really want your people handling patching and infrastructure management or were there better value things that you needed them doing instead? A final point for me would be resilience. I think one of the things that the pandemic proved is actually managed file transfer is quite key for a lot of customers and they were concerned about the cost of moving to a highly resilient infrastructure on-prem. And if you give that away, put it in the cloud, that's somebody else's problem, not yours. Two key areas that we've seen that growth coming from, one would be government through our G Cloud offerings and the other would be uh, the financial sector. And I think the last point for me um, would be that it's not just pure cloud infrastructure that we're seeing customers look for. We're also seeing this hybrid infrastructure that Gartner referenced and that James talked about earlier this morning. So data for cloud applications coming in through a cloud hosted solution, and data for legacy systems coming in through on-prem MFT and remote agents being the link or the bridge between those two sets of capabilities. What does this look like in the EFT world? Well, EFT in the cloud, obviously lots of our customers put EFT themselves using a bring your own license approach and put it into uh, AWS or Azure where it works absolutely fine. Um, Increasingly, though, we're seeing customers looking at Arcus. So Arcus is the global scape and help systems offering for EFT as a SaaS solution. There are a range of level of uptime SLAs available to you, with the current maximum being 99.95%. It's automatically resilient. It's SOC 2 certified. Uh, for those of you that uh, haven't come across SOC 2, it's the American definition of information security that fairly closely aligns with ISO 27001. And at the moment, Arcus is fully hosted out of Azure and is available in the UK, which uh, is an interesting the combination, particularly of UK hosting and SOC 2 certified, something of a USP in the uh, MFT as a service space. 
should just mention at this point that within the health systems portfolio, there is also Go Anywhere as a service which is hosted out of AWS. So Arcus gives you all that functionality that you expect to see um, from enterprise. So you've still got the same protocols that you expect to see. You can still do workspaces. You have your event rule capability. For those of you using AWE, that's also available in Arcus. So all the stuff that you guys mostly know and love in EFT, all delivered via the cloud, all accessed in the same way as you do today with the additional option of the remote agent for moving data backwards and forwards between Arcus and your on-prem servers. So a couple of things to consider. As James said earlier, really the cloud MFT marketplace is still in its infancy. I'm not sure it's quite as young as the baby on the screen, but uh, it's definitely something that is still developing. So we've had vendors coming to this space who are great at cloud and are learning about MFT, or we have the situation with help systems where these guys know MFT in great detail and are learning about cloud application. So there are some things that it's it's are still work in progress. It's developing all the time. And I think some of the things I just want to mention in the next few minutes are just things that as EFT users, you're going to expect to be using today that may not be available to you when you move into the cloud. So it's really just flagging that shared learning. If you're going straight into cloud and you've not been experienced in running EFT on-prem, you may not even notice these issues, but really just wanted to flag that there are some things that aren't available to you uh, in Arcus as it stands today. So here's a basic li a list of some common uh, things that are documented uh, on the Global Scape website that you can see are clearly documented for you there. I'm not going to read them all to you because you can see them for yourselves. A couple of things to flag, Active Directory. Obviously, Active Directory is key to a lot of our customers, particularly for on-prem delivery. LDAP is available, but Active Directory isn't today. So just bear that in mind. Not, lots of our customers don't currently use the API. There's a lot of focus right now in the development stack around the REST API. But I don't want to steal Robert's thunder. He'll talk to you about that a little later. But so lots of our customers have started using that PowerShell capability, and that's not currently available in Arcus. Business Activity Monitor, those of you that uh, were with us last year will remember we ran a session around the Business Activity Monitor. So taking the reporting and the logging that's available to you in EFT and taking it up one step further and giving you those dashboards and that clarity as to what's happening across uh, your infrastructure. That's not currently in Arcus and there isn't a plan to add that this year as it stands today. If that's something you'd like, please feedback, please let us know. Again, we've got a session with Nick Hogg uh, later to talk about ClearSwift and information security. But uh, whilst we're seeing lots of requests for integrating with DLP, um, something that people have talked about for a long time, but again, a bit like cloud, it's something we're actually starting to see happening now. Uh, there isn't a clear swift presence within Arcus. You can still use the ICAP capability and hook out to DLP, but it's not integrated as yet as part of the Arcus delivery. Now, the one that always makes me nervous in terms of explaining why this is the case would be the DMZ gateway. So in their cloud infrastructure, uh, Globalscape chose not to use the gateway. Now, I know lots of our customers use them even if they put this in private cloud. So I'm just going to read you the statement uh, from uh, Globalscape. So DMZ gateway is not applicable in the public cloud because the I cloud IIS is basically a giant DMZ with no truly trusted zone. We achieve the same security outcome using a combination of Azure's load balancers and other features to achieve the isolation that you would typically achieve on the network. If you've got more questions about that, please book a session with Robert or with Richard or drop a question into the chat and I'll get one of them to come back to you on it. Last point that's not on this slide that I would just mention is those of you using the uh, multi-tenancy functionality within EFT, Arcus only supports up to three sites. A couple of practical things that I just wanted to touch upon. So a few uh, differences around automation. Key thing here is just how you build the event rules. So if you're used to using EFT, you're used to going, uh, drilling down into the platform, identifying the path where you want to pick the file up from, building your workflow, and then 
drilling back down to the path. That's not available to you because you don't have access to all of those root folders. So you need to understand what your path is and cut and paste it in when you're building a workflow. A couple of other things. You can't build uh, custom reports in ARM. Not too many of our customers use those uh, right now, but that is uh, something you just need to be aware of. Recovery time objective, we've just had a long conversation with a customer moving to uh, Arcus, just thinking about how you manage that process. So there is a recovery time uh, objectives. I can share more detail with you on that. There's quite a detailed document about how we handle that. If you want that, please do just let me know. Um, but I would just flag that obviously you don't have total control over that. Certificate management historically um, in Arcus has been done by Globalscape rather than you directly. That's something that Robert is addressing and something hopefully we can pick up on later today. And the last piece on that would be branding. So those of you using the web transfer client as part of the HTTPS interface or as part of workspaces will be used to being able to change the HTML and so on. At the moment, you can only change the logo. Last piece for me and to answer the, I think it's one question that's come in about ingress and egress charges. So the pricing model for Arcus is somewhat different. Uh, you all pretty much have EFT purchased as a, a perpetual license and are paying annual maintenance fees. The way Arcus works is it's much more of an OPEX model. The current model is that there's a monthly fee that you pay annually in advance, depending on the level of support that you require so that's whether you need it 24 7 how much event rules you need do you need an unlimited approach do you need unlimited agents um, and then there are ingress and egress charges for every single bit of data so worth just bearing that in mind so there are costs for bandwidth and there are costs for storage and then if you've gone for one of the lower tiers say you've said i only get i'm only going to need 100 event rules and you then need more then you're going to pay for those extra event rule steps now i do know again that this whole pricing model is currently under review and Robert Oslin, who will be presenting later, is really keen to get your feedback on terms of how you like to pay for these models. The other model that they run on GoAnywhere is much more based around paying for the infrastructure that you want and then a subscription license for the functionality you want from your MFT. So that's that's under consideration. But if you can give us any feedback on how you would like that to run, uh, really grateful to receive that. But at the moment, fixed fee plus uh, bandwidth and storage charges. So my last uh, little piece that I wanted to uh, share with you today um, is a quick slide from Gartner. Um, we get asked lots for support around writing business cases uh, for MFT in general. And I found this in their cloud strategy um, document. They call it their uh, cloud strategy cookbook that was published in February uh, 2021. And um, whilst I'm sure there's nothing on there that's going to be uh, come as a great surprise to anybody, I thought that might be useful for some when you're looking to write your business case for how you would move through into a cloud-based infrastructure.